What's up guys, how is it going? This is Peter with another Guild Wars feed. And guess we have also noticed in the last few weeks, or slowly months now, that the price of Actos skyrocketed. 13k at the moment, and perhaps this is the most ideal moment to introduce my new guide which is just about Acto farming. And if we don't take into account the weekly Nicholas farms, and of course the price of the Acto is high enough, then I think the Chaos Plains farm is perhaps the most profitable of all solo farms. But if Acto goes down to like 3k again, then there is nothing to talk about, it won't be worth farming here. So let me start by telling you that a full run here consists of three parts. There is a chamber part, there is a running part and finally the farm itself. The first two parts can also be done with heroes, but uh, sadly the farming part is, is not worth with heroes, because if they are not flagged away, they will each drops. Alright, some information for you guys. I think this farm is a tough one, simply because you got to focus on many things at the same time. You know, bowling, staying alive, the patrol of skeletons of doom, etc. And in the underworld things can go wrong very quickly. Uh, but don't worry, I will help and show you some tips to make it all easier. Probably the most frequently asked question about the underworld is how many actors can you get? Well, according to my own spreadsheet you can expect more than 4 actors each run. Uh, but hey, look at this here. Uh, sometimes it's just 2 or 3, sometimes 7 or 8 Ectos, so don't be impatient and don't draw conclusions too soon. Do several runs and you will see how it all goes. And uh, besides Ectos you can get here rubies, zaphirs, underworld scroll and quite many iron and dust from uh, salvaging the items. Uh, the overall profit is easily 100k plus uh, if Ecto is as expensive as now and obviously it's much lower if Ecto doesn't work like shit. And uh, like so many times, Dervish is the king, but I will show you alternatives at the end of this vid, so don't worry if you got no Derv, there are other options too. Ok guys, so let's start at the very beginning. Here you see the build and equipment you need for the Dervish. If you have seen my previous guide vids, it won't be a big surprise to be honest. Essentially the same as the Fissure of farm. Uh, the runes are Sight Mastery plus 1 plus 3 on the Headpiece, Mysticism plus 1, Wind Prayers plus 1 and the best Vigor rune you can afford. So pretty much the usual Derv is set up. Uh, if you don't have money for Windwalker Insignias it will be good to use Blast Insignias, just make sure you solo one group at a time. Anyway, the build is quite simple, you got to maintain Vow of Piety, Grant's Aura and Vow of Silence all the time. Uh, you got to kill mobs with the two Sight Mastery skills, use URO weaklings to reduce incoming damage and use I'm Unstoppable for the extra armor. And to understand the use of the second skill I have to say a few words about the enemies. There are two Wailing Lords and one Banished Dream Rider at, at each spot. Uh, the Lords are no threat, have no skills, but the Riders can remove enchantments and interrupt even Vow of Silence when you recost it. So to prevent this happening you got to use Signet of Mystic Speed all the time. And I warn you the skills enchantment counter is bugged and if you reuse it before it would end you can get into trouble. So always wait till it ends and let it have a fresh start. And once the Banished Dream Rider dies uh, another 3 Mind Blade Spectres will pop up and when you kill those another 6 and finally a group of 9. And those have Leech Signet, so they can interrupt uh, as well. Luckily in normal mode they won't interrupt uh, our Signet, the, the Mystic Speed, uh, but they do in hard mode, otherwise we should be using Mantra of Resolve or something else. Ok guys, now come the tips and tricks part. Probably the best tip I can give you is about bowling. I've been asked to watch other people's runs many times and most of the time the problem was always the same, they didn't know how to bowl the mind blades. So long story in short, if you look at the ground you will see big holes and those are what we need. And then goes as long as the hole or let's call them the edge is on your character's right side, mobs will stuck. And uh, after a growing move to the closest edge but so that it's on your right side. And when most of the mobs are hitting you, use I'm Unstoppable and you are all weaklings. But use the weakness smartly and try to hit them all. Uh, this way you can reduce incoming uh, DPS by 66%. Uh, 
and if your HP gets too low you can anytime go near them and steal some HP back with Grant's aura. Anyway if you use a cupcake move backwards or sideways otherwise you will outrun the mine blades and lose a grow. When all of them are gathering around a decent spot make very little steps backwards and see how they behave. Once you have a perfect ball go there and start spamming attacks. Ok now some bad examples, uh, guys don't do something like this, this leads nowhere, always make sure you hit free enemies to maximize both your DPS and your healing. Uh, also if you kill mobs not at the edges, just in the middle of nowhere they will scatter so don't do that either. Tip number 2 use a birthday cupcake and a slice of pumpkin pie. I know many people say they don't like using pecans, but guys listen, you can make much faster runs if you do, so the money comes back, it's like a tiny investment, but you save like 15 minutes. But just to answer another uh, FAQ, yes, it's possible to farm this place without the use of any pecans. Take a look, this is how to kill 18 mine blades without any pecans. Uh, however, to reach the Chaos Plains you must bring a Paragon Hero and some shouts to reach at least the first group of obsidian behemoths or you can do the slow way and kill everything till that point with your heroes. Tip number 3 use a shield set. Uh, for big groups you must use a shield set. Uh, if you don't have one then use an armor of salvation. Uh, that's only 50 iron 50 bones and you get more iron back from a single run. Only need to buy the bones and it makes your dervish almost invincible here. Tip number 4, use a Bonder Monk if you are at the practicing phase. To do that simply clear your way to Chaos Plains or try to run there with your heroes and bond yourself. This way your character gets tons of damage reduction giving you more time to get used to the farm. Tip number 5, use Misting Healing on Dervish heroes. I'm quite sure many of you never heard of it but this skill is broken as fuck and really can do wonders. Uh, if you are enchanted you can get healed anywhere in the map, you don't even have to be close to your party. But sadly heroes won't use it on their own, but you can add keys to that or you can click their skills manually. Alright guys, the time has come to show you a full run now. To enter the underworld go to either Chantry of Secrets, Zinku Corridor or Temple of the Ages, then kneel at the Statue of Grant and pay the 1k entrance fee. So the first part is called the chamber. Uh, I tend to flag heroes immediately after loading in and I also pick up the quest, use a cupcake and the pie to start things quickly. I occur the left hand side first, uh, then I quickly grab the right one and usually in the meanwhile my heroes kill the central group. Anyway, the first part is just about defeating three groups of grasping darknesses, then we can begin the running phase. I switch to my shield set to boost my armor a little bit, then I try to bypass the incoming raspings by keeping up my enchantments. They give up usually around the first group of obsidian behemoths and uh, by the way if you are very unlucky these rangers may completely block the entrance. In this case best if you either resign or clear the place with heroes. And where to activate? I am unstoppable here because the charred blacknesses can, can knock you down or tra traps can make you crippled. After that there is one more group of blacknesses and that's pretty much everything uh, in the running phase. So if you reach Chaos Plains uh, your chances are good to bring some Ectos home. And now since this farm is around half an hour long let me explain only the first two groups uh, because the rest can be done following this method. Alright guys here is what we need to do. Agro the two Wailing Lords and board them at the Banished Dream Rider. Then make sure you have all your enchantments up and don't forget to use Synod of Mystic Speed too. Then use Aura Slicer and Reap Imperities as many times as you can but don't forget to reactivate Vow of Silence too. Uh, by the way this first group is ideal for practice and once they are all dead occur the first wave of mind baits and go to the next Dream Rider group. Like I said earlier this is just how I do this farm, you can kill them one by one. Uh, I do this for maximum efficiency, uh, it's up to you. To be honest, uh, these small groups can do much harm, you don't even need to use I'm Unstoppable or the weakness skill, uh, but later you should be using them. 
Once this second group is dead, a group both mine leap groups and blow them up like I did uh, at the beginning of this vid. Pull or edge on your right side and heal yourself back with Grand Zora. No running forward, just backward or, or sideways uh, to prevent aggro breaks. If you can't reach the furthest mine blades, or one of them escaped, uh, move back a bit and make a new ball. Then the next wave uh, are 12 mine blades. These will deal much more damage to you than the previous one, so your bowling must be quicker. Usually against 12 mesmers I switch to a shield set while bowling uh, to get some armor boost. Once these are dead, Ogro the next two groups. Uh, in total, these are 18 mind blades. Uh, this is when boys turn men. Uh, so if you can do it without the help of armor of salvation, then you have mastered this farm, and basically you have learned everything here. Once they are dead, go to the next group, uh, and one important note about this spot, there are either two or three skeletons of doom here, and bowling them is quite tricky, you have to run around them while avoiding as many bone spikes as possible. At first this will feel very hard, especially if you face three skeletons, but uh, practice makes perfect guys. So don't give up if you can do it for the first time. You can even skip this central group and do another one if you are worried about the scales. There are plenty of other groups to farm in the Chaos Plains. But to be honest, scales have a very good Ecto drop rate, uh, so I always farm them. Plus if you have everlasting mob stoppers, you can combine Ecto farming and trick or treat bags uh, farming too. And you can get a lot of these during uh, the Halloween event and capture skeleton souls. Uh, even if the event is finished. And free captured scales trades for 25 trick or treat bags. So it's it's a nice way to, to get uh, tot bags during the year. So guys this is what you got to do as a dwarf. I could show you the full run but I think talking about the same stuff for another 15 minutes would be bad and boring. So let's jump to the alternative professions instead. And as I promised, here come the alternatives. Uh, let's start with Assassin. Similar to the previous Dervish build, but here Shadow Form is the elite skill. Sadly, this limits our DPS, but on the bright side it also gives some damage reduction. Ergo you die much harder than with the Dervish. Otherwise, Signet of Mystic Speed is just to prevent interrupts and the rest of the build is quite similar, just spam attacking skills like with the Dwarf. And another build for assassins using Mesmer skills. This is very similar to the old Valtir build. There are two Wastrel skills and Mantra of Resolve to prevent interrupts. The base idea is to have the Wailing Lords uh, around you to provide enough energy with channeling and keep them alive until all the mesmers are dead. Sadly, if you go close to them, close to the mesmers, their AI behaves weird and they can scatter even if you do the body block trick at the wall. Let's move on, the next one is Paragon on my list. You might be surprised but Paragons can solo farm too. If you don't believe me, you better check my Paragon compilation, uh, the link is in the description. Uh, burn them to death, this is the Paragon's motto and with the help of Shadow Form they can satisfy solo farm needs quite easily. Song of Concentration prevents interrupts in this build. I don't know if anyone has ever farmed with Shield of Regeneration elite skill, but I have tried it and worked quite well, wasn't that bad. Uh, staying alive with monk enchantments and killing with mesmer skills, this seems like a good combination for a monk. And last but not least we have the Vengeful Vaskanhai build for the Ritualist. 
With the help of some elementalist armor boost, the Rit can solo farm the Mesmers as well. The trick here is to spam Azuran's scan just before kinetic armor would end and use weakness on the Mesmers when life stealing effect is on recharge. So guys, this is for today. All the builds you have seen in this video are available in the description. If you still have questions or something wasn't clear, just leave a comment below and I will answer. As always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.